Hello and welcome to Great Craps. Don't have enough room for a big 10 to 12 to 14 foot craps table? Well today I'm going to show you the design of mine and how it goes together with only 16 screws and fits on the kitchen table. Expandable to a larger size if need be or modifiable to throw from a distance through an open end. Stick with me and we'll get right to it. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna go through a few things and do some measurements while I'm here so you can get those if you want them. Uh, I'll also try to post some links down in the uh, comments below on where I got a few things and we'll go from there. So the first thing you'll notice is my layout's a little short. Uh, I was trying to get going for as cheap and as fast as I could, uh, but I still wanted a quality layout. So rather than just buying the uh, cheap one you can get in the party stores or anything like that. I did go online and buy the uh, smallest, most affordable uh, layout that you can have that is professionally printed. So it is a little short for the table, but I already have another one on the way. And so um, my next one will take up the whole size of the table and is long enough to go longer if I decide to expand this table. So <clears throat> the first thing I'll cover is I see a lot of folks staple their layout to the board that everything's on. And uh, these are machine washable. You can throw it in the washer on mild cycle and, uh, and low tumble dry and clean it just like this. And uh, they get dirty pretty easily, so that's a good thing to do. So what I did instead is I had a friend of mine with sewing machine sew Velcro uh, on the underside of the layout. So she just put a quick little fold seam in it and uh, got the specific dimensions that I needed. And this just happened to be the right size for, for the, the board that I already had. So she sewed Velcro and then the way mine is built, um, I covered the entire base with um, felt. So spray adhesive, uh, nice, decent quality uh, fabric felt from the fabric store, um, both uh, top and bottom, because I have it sitting on my kitchen table. It can go on a folding table pretty easily as well. Uh, I will eventually build legs for it or its own base, but I wanted to be uh, portable so I can take it to a friend's house and play there if I needed to. And so um, I built it so that you can actually slide it around and you're not going to scratch up the table or anything. So um, covered in felt on the bottom as well. That took quite a long time to, to get the spray adhesive put on there and then the felt nicely laid down. But um, just a little bit of time and effort and it's easy to do. So <clears throat> the Velcro just uh, sticks to the felt. I'm not going to take the whole thing off because it does take a while to get it stretched and fitted just right and then we don't worry about the corners too much um, but kind of get it nice and tight and velcro down and that's the cool thing is though with the velcro you can adjust uh, as needed and get it nice and smooth and you don't have to worry about putting holes in your in your layout and uh, easy to resell later or uh, use on another another setup transfer to another setup if you want to so um, the base is um, 70 inches. You can go longer if you want. I just happened to have this board uh, from another project that I had done and uh, reused it sitting in my garage. Plywood is uh, kind of expensive these days, so uh, any wood sitting in my garage is kind of considered free wood these days. And so I, it just happened to be the right dimension. So 70 inches long, um, so just a little bit over uh, or under six feet um, on the base and it is three feet exactly three feet wide so um, that's pretty handy because the layout is just slightly wider than that or uh, top to bottom deeper than that so if you can get the dimensions online I, I would recommend before you start cutting anything order the layout and go off of your layout because the last thing you want to do is cut an expensive piece of plywood and then find out that it's too big or small, too small for your uh, layout. 
So um, you'll notice um, the nice thing about the felt on this side is I can still throw to this side and I kind of have a harder surface. So um, this gives me a nice, nice, um, somewhat bouncy, somewhat receptive surface. It's, it's, uh, it's not really much different than some of the casinos uh, that I, I have been to. So uh, there's a lot of different table surfaces out there. I know a lot of people put uh, uh, almost bubble wrap stuff underneath or vinyl underneath to try and simulate or emulate all the different surfaces on tables. Um, <clears throat> this table's not really big enough to do any dice controlling on. I'll talk a little bit about throwing longer uh, later, but um, for the most part, I wanted this so I could learn strategies and practice uh, dealing and chip work and just get comfortable with being at the table before I went to the casino. I'm a relatively new craft player. I just started playing in January. It's now August. So um, I wanted to get up, up to speed and, and learning as quickly as I could and building it this way let me do that while I was building the table. Um, so simple design. So here we go. Um, you got a side and this is, one thing that's kind of unique about the plywood that I used is I had access to full one inch plywood. Um, normally the plywood you buy in the hardware store is gonna be three quarter of an inch, give or take. Uh, you woodworkers out there are probably correct me on the sixteenths or eighths or whatever it is I'm off, but we'll say three quarter of an inch. And uh, this stuff is one inch. It, uh, parts of it came from a, an old armoire or cabinet, something along those lines. And then I just had, I just happened to have access to a full uh, sheet. Originally, this was a full four by eight sheet of one inch thick. So it is one thing that's nice about it. It's a little stiffer and sturdier than a three quarter inch piece. And, but you could do the same thing with three quarter inch piece. Uh, the, dim the dimensions would be slightly different uh, here and there, but you wanna measure one of these things as you go anyway to get everything right. So <clears throat> we're gonna set this on the side. And if you notice, it's the same length as the base. And then we're gonna grab one of the ends. And the ends are made with these two pieces here, and they, they stop short on the table. So basically the table rests here, and, and these kind of are supported by the table themselves. So the whole thing is just a box. Um, I know everybody, a real table has rounded corners. Uh, I see a lot of people go through different efforts and things to uh, get their rounded corners, and they look like they're almost building houses with studs and things. You don't need to do that. You just need a decent piece of plywood and uh, a couple of uh, strips uh, more cut. This is also plywood pieces here um, and a few uh, wood screws or drywall screws in this case. So I also, uh, before I realized I was gonna put rails on, put my nice little logo on there uh, for great crafts for um, my channel. Uh, kind of knew I was gonna start a channel even back then when I first started building this thing. So uh, anyway, this goes on the side or on the end. And it just sits there and rests on top of the table. And the screws, it's already kind of preloaded there. The screws are just gonna screw into this, this uh, anchor piece here, into the side of it. And this being one inch thick plywood, that kind of works out. If it were three quarter, it, it would be a, be a tough hit. So I can do this by myself. I don't need a helper. Um, kind of one of the other neat things about the way it's designed. And now you would think uh, the next thing that I would do is I would put the other end on, but I'm going to leave that off for now because I'm going to show you the uh, advantage of not doing that. We're talking about it at least. So the other side goes on. And the other thing you'll notice is that I covered these completely in felt as well, both sides. Um, I don't like staining. Um, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to staining. It's a lot of work. Um, I did stain the ends, so it would look kind of nice. And I did stain the rails, the tops. So, um, <clears throat> But I went with uh, felt for the sides as well. 
And the reason I did that is one, I don't like staining. And two, um, I didn't want to buy full on press rubber to go around the outside. That stuff is expensive. It's about uh, 70 bucks or so, give or take, depending on where you get it from, for one four foot section. Uh, so I still wanted the insides to be somewhat padded and, and not just be straight wood. And so I went ahead and covered the insides with felt as well. Um, spray adhesive, felt, uh, razor, get it looking nice, staple here and there, and, and you're good to go. So we'll slide this down. And you can see how easy it slides with the felt on the bottom. So as I'm getting it set, everything comes out straight. I don't really have to worry about lining these holes up too much because it's been taken apart and put together a few times now. So, bam, here we go. So we got that end done. Now, it does float. I can lift this whole thing up, just a box on top of a box. But remember, it's resting on top of the board with these two support pieces here. So at this point, I can go ahead and put the diamond rubber in this end. And just like that, while I was building the rest of this thing, I'm up and throwing dice uh, without anything else. Um, got my layout, got my lip rubber, diamond rubber on the end, got the surround, boom, I'm up and throwing dice. Uh, I see a lot of folks out there and some other YouTubers that have all these uh, crazy contraptions and other things. And I have already close to a, a decent table going. Um, the corners kind of hold themselves, the curves. I know it's not perfect radius, but we don't really care. We want, we want to work strategies here. Um, and, it, and it does its own thing. It looks nice. So I'm up and throwing. And the other cool thing about this end being off is if I leave the end off and I just slide the thing down, the weight kind of holds it where it needs to be. I can throw an extra screw in here to hold this down. But now I can go down further if I had no wall here. And I can throw from distance, from either the end, uh, as far out as I need to be. So I can measure, uh, build a small throwing station on a, a little small folding table that's the same height, uh, put the little padded rail on it, and throw from distance. Like I'm at stick one or two right or left, if I went the other way. Uh, from distance, like I'm on a full length table. Um, so <clears throat> there is that possibility just by leaving the end off. Um, the other neat thing that you'll see is uh, these caps that go on the ends for the rails, they're just for this, this area here. So if I want, I could build another small box, uh, however extra length that I want it for each cap end, and basically lengthen the whole table out. So same design, uh, another two to three foot section. And if I had two, three foot sections on the, this thing, I would have a 12 foot table. So pretty easy to expand this table if I want to, if I had more space, uh, we definitely have to move through the garage for that. Uh, Cause I, I don't I think I'm out of dining room space here. So, um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and put the other end on. Uh, so this end, uh, originally I was, like I said, I was trying to save money. So I just, I just bought the first diamond rubber in, and to make it sort of look the same, I painted it green on the inside, instead of staining it. Uh, the other one's staining on the inside. Doesn't need to be, because it's covered by the diamond rubber. But same thing, we're gonna set this on here, and grab my drill. slide a little bit so um, let's see I've got I missed that one a little bit Now we're ready for 
for the other diamond rubber. And I'll put the link for my preferred one down in the comments below. I did have to go with two different sources for my diamond rubber because the first source I bought from when I was ready to buy the second one, they were out of stock. Something about a supply shortage everywhere. So um, <clears throat> these are the ends. Uh, these are the chip rails. And I have another video on how I built these if you want to go look at these. But uh, I didn't want to uh, spend the money on the uh, custom made chip rails or pre made chip rails. And um, I don't have a table saw, I just have a, um, a miter saw and a regular uh, circular saw. So um, I use quarter round, uh, opposing quarter round to get the chip rails. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, it's pretty functional, it works the way I like it. And once it's all stained up, uh, it, you don't really know. So um, unless you're um, really scrutinizing it, uh, it, it serves its purpose and functional for me. So these are just gonna go on here. Um, it is a single piece of plywood on the bottom. Um, and then it is topped around the edges with some crepe wood that I had on hand. It was pretty decent. Um, just pine crepe wood. It's not pallet wood, although you probably use that maybe if you uh, get some that's a little softer and not so hard and split on you. But just crepe wood um, that I recovered. I have access to some things like that. So um, recycled. Didn't cost me much. Uh, the quarter round probably cost me, and the, the base pieces of uh, handy panel, uh, I think it's uh, half inch plywood, um, probably cost me more than everything else. So, four screws here. And these two that are in the, in the chip rails themselves are, are uh, recessed a little bit so your chips aren't hitting them. These I did stain because I wanted the top to look kind of nice. Um, so went ahead and stained them. Uh, the screws on the, the ends here are three inches, and these guys are only, uh, I think, two inches. I just wanted the end screws to be a little tighter because. If you lean on it, it uh, prevents some of the building you might get. And there you go, we're done. Uh, pretty easy to put together. Uh, that took maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, probably could have done it less if I wasn't talking jibber jabbering the whole time. Uh, one more thing, and this is the last thing that I have to add to the rails themselves, is the padding uh, for the rails. And uh, I'll, uh, I've got this one done for the stick man's position. I cut everything with a, just a regular circular saw, so I didn't have to do any fancy curves, just angles. And since it covered everything in felt, uh, it kind of hides all the little screw-ups and everything. So, uh, <coughs> but these things... Uh, I'll show you what they are. It's just a pool noodle. So, pool noodle, split it. Vinyl, buy some vinyl from the fabric store, some decent vinyl, spray adhesive, and uh, there's a trick to it. Uh, you want to put it on the piece that you're working with and then adhere it. Don't do this with your layout on there, you'll spray glue all over the place. But you want to at least put it on what you're trying to clamp it to. Because if you don't, then the, uh, the vinyl wants to wrinkle on you the wrong direction. It doesn't come out looking right. So you want it to kind of already be bent, but it holds on pretty well. And if you wanted to, you could add a piece of Velcro on the inside and a matching piece on the outside, and it'll, it'll hold it on there. 
and we need to take the whole thing apart, you just come off. Pretty simple. Gives you enough padding for your for your rails. Uh, I I still got to do the ones on the outside. That's like the last thing I have left to do, but it gives you an idea of what they'll look like. Um, nice little bit of padding there. Uh, uh, quite a bit less than a, a full-size table or a table in the casino would be, but functional for this size table. Um, I built this table originally, uh, like I said, to learn strategies and be able to practice and get comfortable with uh, chips and uh, managing my rack and everything in to be able to go to the casino and not feel like it was my first time, but also to um, possibly be able to have a uh, craps night. Uh, lots of people have poker nights. Um, I, I, I think it would be kind of cool to have craps night. If you uh, get enough friends together and teach them the game, then you can have them over for craps night. And uh, of course, since then I've discovered uh, there, there's a lot of that going on live on YouTube. And so uh, once I get some cameras set up and everything, I'll be able to participate myself as well on YouTube with all of you uh, who have your own channels. The, the last thing I had to cover is my drink rails. You go, oh, where's your drink rails? Well, with it sitting on my kitchen table, it's a little bit um, less wide than my kitchen table. But if I have it on a folding table, it's the same uh, width as my folding table. So then you don't have a place to put the drink. These are little shelves. They're from Ikea. They're called Beckfam. Beckfam, however you, maybe you pronounce that. Uh, they come unstained. And that's nice and convenient. And uh, just like anything else from Ikea, you put it together. And so I put it together, I stained them up, a couple screws on the side, and just like that, you've got drink rails. That one's going to be finicky on me, but there we go. Drink rails. And I can definitely fit a beer under there uh, for whatever my favorite beverage is, right under there, just like uh, a regular drink rail at the casino. The tang doesn't fall off on there or anything like that. So um, feel free to drop me any questions you have. Um, I'll, I'll do one more measurement here. That's the overall, put the rails on. It's four feet, it goes from, uh, we started with three feet for the base, to four feet once you have the rails on. Um, and end to end, it's just over 80 inches. It's 80 and a half, give or take a little bit. Uh, I sort of custom fitted everything as I built it. I didn't really plan anything out. I just, uh, I had an idea and a concept and I went with it as I, as I, I built it. Uh, made a couple of mistakes here and there. Uh, if I were to build this again, I would do a couple of things just slightly differently. Um, this part here doesn't extend over as much as I would like. And, um, cover the top of the craps rubber or have the groove to put the the uh, top cap for the craps rubber on. But like I said, I'm trying to stay inexpensive here and I really probably don't want to add the top rubber for the craps rubber anyway. It does, uh, does its job, functions the way I want it to. It's playable. It's, it's decent. I can shoot videos on it. Uh, have friends over and play. Um, it serves the purpose of what I built it for. So I... Uh, Hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, thanks for watching. Great craps. Oh, and one more thing. Sorry, Sideshow. Go Churro.